Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And this evening in our broadcast, the U.S. government continues to mislead the American public in regards to President Vladimir Putin. Is he really a threat to the United States? I think as Vladimir Putin has put even on his latest interview with 60 Minutes, the real threat is not Russia, it's the United States with all of its military hardware that has in the last couple of years been mounted on his borders that has threatened his own country. In the interview there, he stated very clearly that he had the evidence that could prove the United States was involved in overthrowing the pro-Russian president of Ukraine back when Ukraine first began to topple. Of course, the U.S. was blaming Russian forces invading the, the country as what toppled the, the government. But it was a neo-Nazi overtaking that happened in there. And there's been many sources that have shown U.S. soldiers, American soldiers, fighting alongside the Ukrainian soldiers in that region. Of course, Russia does annex Crimea later through a referendum which allowed the people to vote. And in the documentary that was released by the Russian media, The Way Home, President Putin again talks about he was trying to uh, avert a war and all the exercises that we were seeing the U.S. was conducting to try to cr take Crimea back. President Putin let the people know clearly in this documentary that the U.S. was not doing a war game. They were coming to try to take Crimea. So he set his supersonic missiles plain as day to where they could be seen by satellite photos, satellite video, hoping that the United States would take the warning this was not a game for the president. It was the first time that President Putin actually put his nuclear forces on high alert that he may have to use this and admitted that in the documentary. But why would the president have to make such a strong statement? As he put it, he doesn't know if they would be able to handle a military confrontation on the ground without suffering heavy losses. His only next step would be a force to be reckoned with, as he even admitted in the interview with 60 Minutes. As he said to the man during the interview there, that when he was asked, do you believe that Russia is a force to be reckoned with? He said, I should hope so. And I don't believe that the president has ever had that desire to be in that, con that situation. As he has stated many times, to take on NATO, you'd have to be crazy. And I believe he is trying to avoid that particular battle. But as we have watched ourselves, being a private news agency, we have spent many time, much time, more than almost two years now, in Europe, in Eastern Europe. We saw with our own eyes as military equipment was headed to the eastern part of Europe on Russia's borders. We monitor the news in multiple languages, including Russian, Slovak, Czech, Polish, and Hungarian. So we're able to see things that are going on that many people in the West never get to see. What started this news broadcast for us today was an article that was reported on RT News, Unfounded Claims, NATO Categorically Rejects It Threatens Russia. The article here, January the 5th, 2016, that just came out here, is something that I wanted to bring to your attention. And then we're going to look at the facts behind all of this. I want to share with you where the real threat comes in. Now, I can't really say why the U.S. got involved in the overthrow of Ukraine. President Putin claims that he does have the evidence. Now, somebody might say that that's propaganda. But yet, John Stockwell, the former CIA Director of Operations for the United States, said that the U.S., as he worked for the CIA, was steadily on a campaign of toppling democracies for whatever purpose that they had, mainly the Contras, places like that Central America and South America where the U.S. was always engaged in toppling democracies. We saw the same thing with Iraq. There was an accusation that Iraq was guilty of having uh, weapons of mass destruction. But in reality, we, of course, the U.S. government, President Bush at the time, used the Kurds as one example that the Saddam Hussein was actually in there doing genocide against the Kurds. He goes in to save the day. While Obama has turned his back while Turkey goes in and annihilates and genocides the Kurdish people. 
Why is it one American administration justifies to save the Kurds, another president turns his back and allows them to be totally annihilated? What's the real purpose for the United States and the Middle East? And now, of course, the U.S. has spent two years trying to topple uh, Bashar al-Assad, actually probably longer. What is it all for? Why is the U.S. doing these things? Russia finally coming in at the request of President Bashar al-Assad, and I don't say that President Bashar al-Assad is a saint, but clearly he has have, he has, his country has been in a not a civil war, but a war with the United States, backed ISIS, Turkey as well, fighting, falsely accusing the government of using sarin gas on his own people, when in reality we have just discovered it at the end of last year, according to Turkish people inside their own government, the sarin gas was being mixed inside of Turkey, handed over to the ISIS soldiers to be used on public populations there, and then blamed by the United States on Bashar al-Assad's forces doing this. Even though we know, and as a supporter of Israel, a staunch supporter of Israel myself, I realize that there is a great contention between Israel and Syria. They are still technically at war. But it doesn't make that everything that Israel does on the up and up either, because even Israel has been involved in the ISIS campaign, as it was proven recently when a general was captured. Of course, Israel said it wasn't a general, it was a different ranking officer, but they did admit it was. And even we had our own intel from UN officials inside of Israel that stated to us that ISIS members had been seen with tallit, that is the Jewish, uh, the four corners on the Jewish garments, ISIS members wearing tallits. What's really going on in here? And now the latest article here on RT News that claims that the U.S. is not there provoking anything with Russia. And of course, in the 60 Minutes broadcast, Vladimir Putin said it was a direct provocation to his country. This was uh, recorded, I believe, in December of 2015, this particular interview that I watched just the other day. But he said it was provoking his country by having all the different military hardware being sent to the, to the former Soviet Baltic states. And he said directly to the interviewer there, is it wrong or illegal for me to put troops in my country on the border as well when you're building up all these troops on yours? I have to admit that the President Putin had a very good stance, very good, very diplomatic remarks back to the interviewer there on 60 Minutes. I believe that was Ted Koppel. I could be wrong on the name of the guy that interviewed uh, Vladimir Putin there. But anyway, let me go on to this article. The North Atlantic Bloc has categorically denied it poses a security threat to, Russian, to Russia despite the alliance's significant expansion in the Baltic and Eastern Europe, where it stages massive military drills. We categorically, this is the actual quote from uh, Oana uh, Lung Escu. She said this on Tuesday. We categorically reject totally unfounded claims that NATO and its policy constitute a security threat to Moscow. NATO spokesperson Oana Lung Escu said on Tuesday. NATO's enlargement is not directed against anyone. Uh, Longascu said, and each sovereign nation has the right to choose for itself whether uh, it joins any treaty or alliance. She was apparently referring to the recent decision of the alliance to invite Montenegro to join NATO. Now we do know also that recently the United States put nuclear weapons in Romania. Now of course the United States was saying that the reason why those nuclear warheads were put in Romania was not to be directed at Russia, but as a deterrent to the threat of Iran. But look on your map where the weapons were placed in Romania and see who is closer, Moscow or Iran. By far, Moscow is much closer. But anyway, uh, we, Luganska added NATO is still studying Russian security strategy. For 2016, which was presented on Thursday, the strategy named NATO expansion towards Russian borders as one of the key security threats. In fact, that was the first time that the president actually had to use such a statement in his uh, security uh, uh, draft that he put together here for 2016. 
Constant militarization arms buildups are unfolding in regions neighboring Russia, the document said, adding the principles of equal and indivisible security are not being respected in the Euro-Atlantic, Eurasian, and Asian Pacific regions. So it's not just Europe, this is also going over on in the Pacific, just as China is faced with contentions between the United States and its own country. However, the document also said Russia is still interested in a fair dialogue and good relations with NATO, the U.S., and the EU. Under the partnership, it's important to enhance mechanisms provided by the International Treaties on Arms Control, Confidence Building Measures, Issues Related to Non-Proliferation of Weapons of Mass Destruction, the Expansion Cooperation in the Fight Against Terrorism, the Settlement of Regional Conflicts, etc. Now, you've got to keep in mind, friends, that all this that is going on right here, um, we realize that, that even in this situation here, Russia also has stated they have tried to bring in the United States to work with them on ISIS in Syria. And every single time, according to the Russian president and to Russian news sources, the U.S. has denied to work with Russia whatsoever and will not tell uh, the U.S. of any of its own moves that it's or tell Russia the moves they're making. They have totally separated from uh, Russia in the fight against ISIS terrorists. And according to even some, some military analysts from the United States, speaking on a nom uh, uh, to where, you know, so no one knows who they are, they have stated that, yes, Russia has done more to fight terrorism against ISIS than the United States has ever thought about doing. They're doing an excellent job in doing so. So why is the United States not willing to work with Russia? Why are they willing to back Turkey when Turkey has clearly been found guilty of smuggling oil out of the country, selling the oil to other countries, including, by the way, Germany and France also got involved in that? Is the U.S. buying this as well? Russia says they know who's doing it. And Russia also said that they know that the United States was the one that helped arm ISIS. But they're still willing to work with America. But America is not willing to work with Russia. So what's this all going to come to? Let me share with you some interesting insights here. This article here comes out on June 13th of 2015. This was by WSKG News. All right, it says, To counter Russia, U.S. is mulling tanks, heavy guns for Eastern Europe. This uh, article was written by Scott Newman on June the 13th of 2015. They're mulling the idea of sending tanks and heavy equipment. U.S. Bradley fighting vehicles take part in joint exercises in Georgia, a military base near Tbilisi. Bradleys would be deployed to a NATO member states in Eastern Europe and Baltics if a Pentagon proposal is approved. That's if it's approved, right? Rem remind you now, this, is, uh, this was originally published on June 14th of 2015 at 9.18 a.m., updated at 6.45 p.m. The Pentagon is considering a proposal to place M1 Abram tanks, Bradley fighting vehicles, and armored howitzers in NATO countries in the Baltic Eastern Europe in a bid to stem what is viewed as Russian aggression. In a report first published by the New York Times and confirmed by NPR, American and allied officials, okay, it's first reported by the New York Times, confirmed by NPR, National Public Radio, American and allied officials were quoted as saying that if approved, the move would mark the first time since the end of the Cold War that the U.S. would station such heavy military equipment in the newer NATO states. And that's what that was. Remember, this is reported in June of 2015. First time. The proposal specifies enough heavy equipment to support about 150 soldiers in each Baltic states, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and enough for Another 750 soldiers per country in Poland, Romania, Bulgaria, possibly Hungary, according to the Times. All told, the equipment could support 3,000 to 5,000 soldiers. All right. And that's what we have there. Let me take you. These were some of the articles that I brought off of the uh, website today. Um, the Wall Street Journal. U.S. sends tanks, military equipment to deter Russian aggression. Now first, if you remember, according to the article here on RT, according to the spokesman for the U.S. government, unfound claims noted NATO categorically rejects it, threaten, it, is, it threatens Russia. Okay? 
They're denying any of that, but it says the U.S. tanks military equipment to deter Russian aggression. But remember, according to Russia and the proof that they have been able to supply, and there's been other articles as well to back his claims up, even former CIA director John Stockwell that claims the U.S. does get involved in overthrowing democratic governments. You see, the Pope of Rome needs Ukraine. Don't know why, but they want Ukraine. Even President, or, or excuse me, not President Bush, but uh, the third son Bush that is running for president now said that Russia's not bad people. We just need to overthrow the dictatorship, speaking President Putin, and bring them in as part of the European Union. So is that really what happened in Ukraine? Is this what Bush is actually saying? Did they just have to overthrow the government? He says that the dictator of Russia needs to be overthrown so that they can bring Moscow and this group into the European Union as well. You know, you have to understand, this bothers me as an American citizen that has always believed that America has fought for the freedom of religion and freedom to spread democracy around the world. I really felt like that we were a good country. But you know, when you position in another part of the world where you can see both sides of the story and you can find out what's really truth, then you find out how much propaganda the Obama administration has been feeding the American public. And they have been misleading the American public majorly. To a point, it's going to drive us to a war. And unfortunately, Russia has no choice but probably use nuclear force. Because Russia... They don't have the, 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 the large enough military to fight a ground war, an air war, and everything else against not just the United States, but against NATO and their allies as well. They do have some technical uh, advantages over us, yes. All right, so the Wall Street Journal, U.S. sends tanks military equipment to deter Russian aggression. All right, U.S. Secretary of Defense Ashton Carter arrives at the airport in Tallinn, Estonia on Tuesday. Carter is on a five-day tour of Europe. All right, on a five-day tour. This was on June 23rd, as you see highlighted on your screen, June 23rd of 2015. The U.S. is sending tanks, heavy artillery, and other equipment to countries across the Baltics to bolster their security and deter Russia from attempting another incursion within the region, Defense Secretary Ash Carter said here Tuesday. Now, they're sending it, right? It's not a question of it's already been sent. They're sending it. Watch, what, watch some of the things I've highlighted here for you. The surge of equipment includes a total of 250 tanks, Bradley fighting vehicles, self-propelled howitzers, along with 900 vehicles and other equipment is the latest U.S. response to Moscow as Washington pushes for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization to strike a more assertive profile in an increasingly jittery, jittery region. They were speaking about Ukraine, the crisis in Ukraine, which was not started by Russia. We've been led to believe that, but it wasn't started. The equipment is headed to a temporary storage sites in six nations, including Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Romania, Mr. Carter said at a press briefing. It's going to be sent there. What date? June 23rd, 2015. Keep that in your mind. The tendency by Russia to try to turn back the clock and go backwards in history rather than go forwards in histories, we're not going there with them, Mr. Carter told a group of sailors and Marines aboard an American amphibious ship decked here after it participated in exercises in the Baltic Sea. A day earlier, Mr. Carter announced a separate suit of U.S. military gear and weaponry for a new NATO rapid response force and has emerged as a key agent of Washington's response to Mr. Putin. The announcement signaling a, uh, a revigorated approach to collective security of the region comes as NATO defense ministers gather Wednesday to face both conventional military challenges from Moscow as well as the beginnings of, no of vocal nuclear threats from the Kremlin. All right. Now, to give you an idea, this is the military moves. This is in that very article that we just brought up. The U.S. will draw from troops stationed uh, in, in the region to operate weaponry. This is what they're doing. You can see the countries, and by the way, Ukraine right there is, of course, is already the one that's in the problem there with, uh, on the border of Russia and uh, Eastern Europe. But Poland, Romania, Bulgaria, 
uh, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia especially. These are, those are the closest countries to Moscow. Romania, that you see here at the, closer to the bottom of the screen, uh, Romania is where nuclear weapon warheads were just placed. And I don't think that the map here shows... Okay, you, you can't really... Uh, Iran is way over here to the far right. You can just see just a little tiny corner of the state. Moscow, not shown on the uh, map here, but Moscow is actually closer to where the nuclear weapons are in Romania than it is to, to any major city inside of Iran. But accord, uh, supposedly, that's why they're there. All right, now, then comes the next part of the, uh, the announcement. Announce that he would, th this is where their, their, their issue it comes in as well. Uh, the tree, or uh, let's see, and engage us posed by Moscow. Now, this is what, what they're, this is why they're saying they're sending in all the equipment to Eastern Europe. Okay, they're sending it in for this reason here. Announce that he would locate 40 intercontinental, uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles. Um, hang on, let me get the, I'm sorry. My apology, I had it off the screen here. It says, Mr. Putin last week announced that he would locate 40 intercontinental ballistic missiles in the region, adding to the regional anxieties. It also has increased flights of nuclear-capable bombers. A question confronting NATO ministers is how Mr. Carter and regional military officials can assert their military might without being provocative, while Moscow will portray the latest move as an American and NATO saber-rattling that that's not how American officials see it, said a senior military official. Now, their claim is that they're putting in all these tanks as a reason. The reason why they're doing it was because President Putin announced that he would locate 40 intercontinental ballistic missiles in the region. This was on news. Obama was stating on the news that he was sending in all these tanks because Putin is going to put together 40 more intercontinental ballistic missiles and put them there. Now here's where it gets interesting. We reported this on Israeli News Live when this was all going on because when this came out, we ourselves had seen the equipment being moved to the eastern part of Europe already. We knew that President Barack Obama was lying to the American public. Now, let's take a look at something else here. I want to show you what Putin says here. This was on June 16th of 2015. Reuters publishes the article. Putin says Russia's beefing up nuclear arsenal. NATO denounces saber rattling. All right. President Vladimir Putin said on Tuesday that Russia was concerned about anti-missile defense systems near its border. After announcing that Russia would add more than 40 intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, to its nuclear arsenal this year. So it wasn't that he's moving them there. He's going to build them. Now, we already know that the U.S. had moved in... Um, uh, that, that was public. The U.S. moved in some uh, uh, batteries there to protect the, the, the countries there from uh, weapons coming in. Putin made his announcement a day after Russian officials, officials denounced a U.S. plan to station tanks and heavy weapons in NATO member states on Russian border. Putin said it was the most aggressive act by Washington since the Cold War a generation ago. Notice there what they said. <laughs> I'll highlight it for you here. President Putin made his comments a day after Russian officials denounced a U.S. plan to station tanks, heavy weapons in NATO member states on Russia's borders. A day after. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry expressed concern over Putin's missiles announcement and said no one wanted to see backsliding to a kind of Cold War status. Kerry told reporters a news briefing that Putin's stance could be posturing, but he added, nobody should hear that kind of announcement from a leader of a powerful country and not be concerned about what the implications are. What's the real reason, though, why Putin had to bring in 40, or said he would build 40 intercontinental ballistic missiles to add to his nuclear arsenal? Let's look at what really went on. This here is an American article. It's the title of the article is War is Boring. It's by Joseph Trevthick published on September the 10th of 2014. Now, that was nine months, 
nine months before President Putin announced he's going to build 40 intercontinental ballistic missiles. The Pentagon has been sending a bunch of tanks and other heavy vehicles to Europe in the last month or so. The Army needs them for training exercises and as a warning to Russia. Wait a minute. Didn't Ashton Carter just say they were just sending them? Didn't John Kerry say they were just sending it as a response to Putin's 40 intercontinental ballistic missiles in June of 2015? Why is it in September 10th of 2014, nine months earlier, it's being reported they were already doing it? <coughs> now, let me remind you of what the article was reported. WSKG reported. It's what I showed you a moment ago. All right, WSKG, this article right here on June 13th of 2015, they stated in a report first published by the New York Times and confirmed by National Public Radio, American and allied officials were quoted as saying that if approved, the move would mark the first time since the end of the Cold World War, war, this Cold war that the U.S., with station heavy military equipment in the newer NATO states. First time. <laughs> but according to this article here on September 24th, nine months earlier, they were already sending them. Is that right? Back to his article. But it ain't easy getting 70 ton M1 Abrams main battle tanks across a few thousand miles of ocean. American forces work with private companies to ship the vehicles across the Atlantic and their final destinations. This logistic prowess is one of the U.S. military's greatest strengths. He goes into the logistics of it. The time, since 1987, how the U.S. has been doing this. Transcom can make use of the Air Force's huge cargo planes and the Navy fleet of special cargo ships. Air Mobility Command hundreds of C-5, C-17s, and C-130s can rush troops and equipment to the front line in hours. But this is not what he's talking about in the article. The Army's little-known surface development distribution command occupies a more unique space. The ground combat command shipping arms more than 3,000 uniformed personnel on its payroll, including reservists, etc. It goes into that. But they use private shipping companies. Now, the photo you're seeing here was tanks being loaded in Germany on trains. <coughs> he says here in the article, whenever and wherever soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and coast guard men are deployed, SDDC is involved in planning and executing the surface delivery of their equipment and supplies. All of Transcom units are probably working harder than usual in Europe at the moment. Washington is doing its best to reassure its friends and allies as Russia gets increasingly aggressive in Eastern Europe. Speaking about Ukraine, the Pentagon has stepped up the number of training exercises and other military exchanges in Europe. These war games and other engagements all come under the code name Operation Atlantic Resolve. Remember, this is nine months, and yet they just lied and told you it was the first time they were going to have equipment in Eastern Europe. And they were saying as a result of Vladimir Putin putting together 40 intercontinental ballistic missiles. In yellow here. Last month, SDDC personnel and civilian rail workers helped load Abram tanks and Bradley fighting vehicles from the 1st Cavalry Division onto the trains near Fort Hood, Texas. That was August of 2014. That was 10 months before they said they were going to send this stuff over. 10 months prior. It says here, commercial train engines then hauled the cargo to the next destination, a private seaport along the Gulf of Mexico. Transcom regularly contracts commercial facilities, the Union Longhornsmen, to load up the military gear. We don't know what port of the vehicles from the 2nd Battalion, 8th Cavalry went to. We also don't know what ships were waiting for them. But right here in Norway, you see this large ship here. Let me give you a little bit better picture of this. This large ship here, a huge ramp there. But let me show you what they brought in. Look here on the bottom here of the picture in your screen. U.S. military equipment. 
to be staged in the eastern countries there of Europe, right along the Russian border. For instance, uh, then he says on here, in, in a crisis, Air Force cargo planes could also help rush troops and material to other final destinations. The flying branch recently flew striker armored vehicles from Germany to Latvia during a war game called Steadfast Javelin II. Now, you could say that they were technically saying in their earlier part, first time they actually sent them there to ward off Russian aggression. But I'm about to help you refute all that. Hilvani Spravi, this is a Slovak uh, news article published on December the 12th of 2014. I've taken the liberty to translate this for you. The article is completely in Slovak. My wife was born in Slovakia, so we're able to translate any document we have need of in five different languages. It's stated here December 12th, 2014 is what it is there. You see the, uh, right up here at the top here, that is the Slovak date there, December 2014. Latvia. The Latvian authorities have confirmed that the train was carrying vehicles First Division USA. Let me show you the train. <coughs> I've got a very scratchy throat, I apologize. The freight train traveled across Latvia, full range of American armored vehicles. The train was a few days ago seen at the railway station, Dalbo, located only 300 kilometers from the Russian border. Now this was December the 12th. That's six months before the U.S. admitted to anything. Already sending tanks and all other kinds of equipment there. And according to this article here, the small print is all this Slovak part. According to the recorded train is transporting 38 vehicles and several semi-trailers, including combat vehicle Bradley armored personnel carriers, M113 gasoline tanks, trucks, type, heavy expanded mobility vehicles such as the Hemet, heavy expanded mobility tra tactical trucks, armored recovery vehicles, M83, M88 Hercules, several management and rescue cars and trucks with ammunition. The Latvian authorities for news portal Delphi confirmed that the train which was seen on December the 7th vehicles traveling in the 1st Division of the United States and their submission, the train headed to Lithuania. American armored vehicle towards Russia today, according to information from, from military exercise in the Baltic region and the Poland as part of the redeployment and rotation of U.S. forces. It's a deployment and a rotation. They were leaving the equipment there. Other fighting vehicles are also located in U.S. military bases in Germany. Deployment of military equipment to the Baltic states and Poland shall take place within the Americans event called Operation Atlantic Resolve, whose official aim is to soothe U.S. allies in eastern Ukraine from resurgent of Russia. Now, the problem is, friends, is that the United States stated in the article that I shared with you a moment ago on uh, WSKG in yellow here, the first time since the end of the Cold War that the U.S. would station such heavy military equipment in the newer NATO states. They've actually lied to us. So why did Russia then announce and Russia says they were retaliating for the presence of the heavy military equipment on its border. And of course, Barack Obama was telling us, and many of the other officials, like Ashton Carter, Defense Secretary Ashton Carter was saying to us that they were retaliating because Russia said they were going to build 40 more intercontinental ballistic missiles. In fact, they even lied about that. Russia said they're going to build 40 more intercontinental ballistic missiles. They said that they were just moving them onto the border there. Well, Russia did move intercontinental ballistic missiles to its border. But who is the one that is threatening who? I don't know if the next administration will be any better than Barack Obama. I really don't. I mean, probably the only man, and I'm not for the guy to begin with, really, but the, the, the one 
the one one guy that, that that's running for the president right now, the the, the great ty tycoon of financial, uh, that everybody just thinks he's crazy. But he actually applauds President Putin. Maybe he could actually get along with President Putin. I don't know why I always get tongue-tied on that guy's name. But other than that, and I, don't, I really don't believe he'll get elected, that's the problem. At the rate things are going in the United States, if this situation with Bundy over there in Oregon goes crazy, which some of the articles that we're seeing right now, I can't say that they're super reliable, uh, natural news. I, I, I know there's some people that don't like natural news, but uh, they're claiming that the schools that were shut down were taken over by federal authorities. I've also seen other articles there where they're talking about cutting the power. They're going to try to freeze them out and hopefully it'll all die down. But the U.S. is not going to let the Bundy family once again cause another embarrassment for the United States. Is this a staged event? Is it going to be done in order to try to bring about a civil war in the United States? It's one way Barack Obama would stay in power, sure enough. There was a sister that prophesied that 2016 would be the year where civil unrest would become so rampant across the U.S. that before the elections could be done, that Obama would actually take and call for martial law and he would have to stay in office and delay the, the elections. May very well happen. We live in a very serious time, friends. Very serious times. I'm Stephen Benoon. If you guys, if this type of news reporting is a blessing to you, Stand with us and support this news broadcast. We do many prophetic segments for the believers around the world. Sometimes though, we just look at the serious side of news here to try to bring you what the truth is, an unbiased approach on this. Even recently, I've been seeing issues in Israel that has concerned me about my own people, but I do know that there's still true Jewish people living in Israel as well that are there waiting for the coming of the Messiah, and we are on the verge of the two witnesses coming on the scene like never before in the history of all mankind. We need it. We need your support as well to keep this ministry going. You can go to IsraeliNewsLive.org, you'll see that, and IsraelReturns.com at the end of the broadcast. It comes out on the screen right there. But you can go there and give online. Israel Returns has our mailing address in Europe where you can send it to us here in the Czech Republic. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.